What's up guys, Dr. Houlihan here again with another video for you. Today I'm addressing a question that is sort of a hot button topic on the internet. I get asked by my patients all the time. The question is, is pronation bad? Now the answer is not necessarily. I know that there's some fitness influencers on the internet or maybe even working professionals who would sooner take a bullet than admit to you that their ankle has pronated at some point in their life. But I'm here to tell you that it's not bad and in fact it's a normal part of the gait cycle. You should be doing it pretty much every time you take a step. It is a regular part of the built-in mechanism of your foot to attenuate forces and absorb shock every time you are accepting weight onto your stance leg. So let's really quick talk about what exactly pronation is. Pronation is a combination of three different movements. So it's a combination of eversion, abduction, and dorsiflexion. Whereas supination is just the opposite, not quite as important for this video, but that is including plantar flexion, inversion, and adduction. Now, even though pronation is a normal part of the gait cycle, it becomes problematic when people have no control over their pronation. When you're not in control over when or how much your foot is pronating, that is when it starts to become problematic. Now, there are several factors, even upstream from the ankle all the way up to the hip, that can influence what's happening with pronation at the ankle. For instance, women have wider hips than men do and are more prone to having a larger Q angle. The Q angle is the angle formed between the shaft of the femur and the tibial tuberosity. Now, if you have a wider Q angle, the ankle down below is going to be more prone to pronating. Additionally, there's something called femoral antiversion, retroversion, and antitorsion, and retrotorsion, all of which can have influence on the position of the knee and accordingly the position of the ankle. That's a little bit more tricky, not going to get too far into it, but just know there's more than one factor than just the foot that can influence pronation. So aside from anatomical differences that exist between the ankles, knees, and hips of different people, by and large what I'm finding is the most common cause of overpronation is weak feet. The muscles that are underneath and along the lateral edges of the foot are weak and therefore people are not able to control when or how their ankle is pronating. Now it's a little bit of a tangent, but the shoes are probably the cause of this. Your shoes are a cause of a lot of your lower extremity problems. I dive a little bit deeper into it into this video if you want to find out why your shoes might be causing you to overpronate. So I've got a video of myself walking on a treadmill here and I broke it down a little bit to show you when and how the foot should be pronating during the natural gait cycle. So in this first portion of the video here, it's just me walking on the treadmill, normal speed. We're gonna take a look at the right ankle. I want you guys to focus in on what's happening. Now we're gonna slow this video down and show it again. So pause right here. Right when I'm at initial contact, you can see there's a pretty much vertical orientation of my heel and my Achilles tendon to my calf muscle. So this is before I've accepted any weight onto my foot and before the foot has started to pronate. It's usually in a more neutral or supinated position here. So if we go forward a little bit, we can see the weight is accepted onto my foot and now we get a little bit of that rolling inwards of the ankle. That's the normal pronation that occurs during the gait cycle. The foot has a built-in mechanism to accept force and this is it. So if we go through the step, I still have that load and I start to offload towards the end of my step and you'll see that the foot comes back into a neutral position, even maybe a little bit of supination. And actually, if we take it to the, to the lift off, we can see that now I have a vertical orientation of my foot. And in people who are over pronators, you might see that the foot is way externally rotated at this time in the gait cycle. So I want to show you guys too what this looks like from a couple different angles seen close up on my own foot. So looking at it from the side angle, you can see me kind of coming into pronation and supination. And you can really see those muscles along the inside edge of my foot working to keep me uh, supinated. Now, interesting thing about this front view, if you see me come into pronation, you see that my big toe turns into a valgus angle, and pronation is a huge factor in terms of the development of bunions. So, pronation is not bad for you, your foot should be able to do it, however, you must be able to control how much and when your foot is pronating. Overpronation is caused by weak feet, which is usually caused by improper footwear, and if improper footwear is your problem, I've got two dozen videos on my channel with recommendations for you. Also, I know I referenced it earlier in this video, but this video right here is probably the most valuable 10 minutes you could spend if you want to understand why improper footwear could be leading to overpronation or all sorts of other troubles. It's the most valuable 10 minutes of your life. Check this one out. All right, so I hope this video was valuable for you, and as always, I'll have more videos on the way soon. Be on the lookout.